Hello, fellow travelers. I'm Nomad Jim, a retired, minimalist, solo, full-time slow traveler. Thanks for stopping by. If you're going to be traveling outside your country for any period of time, you're going to need to find a way to be able to use your phone, not only as a phone, but also as a way to access the internet wherever you happen to be. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the different options available to you to get phone service and data service when you're in other countries. This is video number four in a series that I'm doing about 10 key things that you need to address before you start your part-time or full-time slow travel journey. And in this case, it also applies to anyone who's going to be traveling outside of their own country for any period of time. So let's get started. The first option available to you is to simply use the phone service that you're already using in your country. Most phone carriers have the ability to use their, their phone service internationally, so you can do that. The only problem with it is that it's generally going to be cost prohibitive. I had Verizon several years back, and I decided on a few occasions that that's the way that I would do it. And the way it worked was each day that you would use the service, it would cost you $10 for that day. So I did that knowing that I wasn't going to be gone that long and also thinking, well, I'm not going to use it every single day. So that's what I decided to do. However, it ended up being a lot more costly than I thought it would be. And the reason for that is that even on days when I wasn't planning to use the service, somehow my phone would ping against a local cell tower. And as soon as that happened, bam, another 24 hour period would start and I'd pay $10 for it, even though I didn't really want it. And later on, I found out looking online, I saw a lot of people complaining about this issue. And apparently it's a common thing and it's really hard to stop your phone from pinging against the local cell towers, even when you don't want it to. So it can end up really adding up to a really high cost if you go this route. So it is an option, but it's a costly one. Now there are some carriers like T-Mobile that do offer an international plan. So you can use that and be able to use your phone internationally in pretty much every country for a monthly rate. The only issue with that is that you don't necessarily get high speed internet. It's at a lower speed. And if you want high speed internet, you're going to have to pay extra for that on top of the base rate that you're paying monthly. Also, the amount of data that you're provided is somewhat limited. So you may reach a point where you're going to exceed that limit that they have. And if that's the case, you'd have to pay an extra amount to get more data. So there's two areas there where you could end up paying more on top of the base rate that you're paying monthly to get, to get uh, more data and to get the high speed internet. So that can become somewhat costly as well, but it is an option if you're just going to use your plan and your plan happens to be T-Mobile. The next option is to get a physical SIM card inserted into your phone when you arrive in the new country. And you can do this by going to a phone store or a kiosk. Sometimes you can actually see them in the airport when you arrive. There'll be a kiosk there that sells SIM cards. So you go to this kiosk or to the store and you have them physically insert a SIM card into your phone. And then you'll be able to use your phone and have data while you're in the country. And it's usually a monthly rate that they give you to do that. And that works pretty well. It is somewhat of a pain that you have to find a phone store if they don't have one at the airport that you can use so that you can get it inserted into your phone. So, I mean, there's this thing that you have to find it. You have to get somebody to put it in there for you. So it's a little bit of a hassle, but it's one way to do it. Now, another way that's becoming a lot more popular these days is to get an eSIM. And with that, you don't have a physical SIM inserted into your phone. Instead, what you do is you download the SIM from online onto your phone. And in that way, 
you don't have to go searching for a phone store or a kiosk that has SIM cards. You can just download it off the internet right onto your phone. So that makes it a lot more convenient. And there are a lot of different companies that provide this service. One that's very popular is Aerolo, and they have a variety of different plans that you can get at different price points. So you can get some that are just for the country that you're in or for a region, perhaps for Western Europe or something like that. Or you can get a global plan that covers everywhere around the world. So obviously that would be the most expensive one, but whatever works for you for where you're going to actually be and what you can afford, those options are available to you with Aerolo. Now, another option that's available to you if you are a U.S. citizen is to use Google Fi. This is Google's phone service, and it's a service that is provided without a SIM card, without an eSIM. It's just on your phone, and it seamlessly connects to the cell towers in whatever country it is as soon as you arrive there. So there's nothing you have to do. It just automatically happens for you. Very convenient. So this is the service that I've been using the last two plus years, and I really like it. I like the fact that you have that seamless ability. You don't have to think about it. It just happens as soon as you arrive in a new country. And you get high-speed internet with this. You don't have to pay extra for it. It comes with the monthly rate that you're paying for the service. So it's a really great deal in that respect too. Another couple of things about Google Fi that are really nice is that the amount of data that, you give, that they give you each month is a rather high amount. I'm not sure exactly what the amount of gigabytes that it is, but I've never even come close to reaching that limit. So that's a nice thing as well, and it's included in the price that you're paying on a monthly basis. In addition, you're able to use your phone as a hotspot. And I'll mention a little later on how that came in handy for me when I was having some trouble getting my laptop to use the Wi-Fi at a place that I was staying at. So Google Fi is really great and I've really enjoyed having it. However, it does have a little bit of a limitation and that has to do with the amount of time that you can use it outside of the United States. They have in the contract a statement that says that you can only use the service outside the U.S. for 90 days. So in the past, they haven't been very strict about that. When I first started using Google Fi, I was out of the U.S. for four and a half months, and I never got any notification that they were going to take me off of the plan or anything like that or discontinue my service. So I was able to do just fine with that. However, what I'm hearing now is that they are starting to enforce that 90-day period. In the past 12 months, I haven't been outside the U.S. longer than three months at a time. So I've never had the experience of getting a nasty gram from Google to tell me that they're going to be taking me off the service. But I do know that other people have gotten that and they have had their service turned off. Now, when that happens, your data service gets turned off, but you're still able to use your phone for phone calls and for texting. So, so that's still available to you. So in the coming year, I am planning to be outside the U.S. longer than three months at a time. So if I do that and Google tells me they're going to be taking me off my service, then what should I do in that case? Well, what I plan to do is then use an eSIM like Aerolo and download that onto my phone. So that'll be a way to fill the gap between the time that Google discontinues my service and I can get back to the United States and reinstate the service because that's how it happens. Once you come back to the U.S., within a few days after hitting and pinging against the different cell towers in the U.S., they'll reinstate you and, and get your service going again. So that's my plan to do this, is to continue to use Google Fi. And if I get kicked off the service, then I'll use Aerolo to supplement that until I can get back to the United States and reset the clock again. Now, I should add that T-Mobile, which I mentioned earlier, that has an international plan, they also have in their contract that you're not to be using the service more than 90 days 
at a time as well. So they just haven't been enforcing it. And like I said, Google Fi really wasn't enforcing it earlier on either. But they've started to become more strict in enforcing it. And there's a very good chance that T-Mobile may start doing that as well. So even though you may have been using T-Mobile and being out of your country for six months or whatever it is and not had any issues with it, that may change in the future. It may end up being that that three month period gets enforced by T-Mobile just the same way that it's starting to be enforced more often by Google Fi. And I should also point out that even though Google Fi is only for US citizens, the eSIMs like Aerolo are available to anybody anywhere around the world can use these services. So you don't have to be a US citizen to use Aerolo or similar types of eSIMs like that. So keep that in mind as well. Now let's talk about other devices that you have and how you would access the internet with them. So we're talking about laptops, iPads, Kindles. So in that case, you're gonna be using Wi-Fi and you're gonna use Wi-Fi that will be provided at the place that you're staying at, a hotel, an apartment, or you can use Wi-Fi in public spaces, such as at a coffee shop or a store. And there are also some cities around the world where they offer free Wi-Fi throughout the city. So these are different ways that you can access the internet using Wi-Fi. And one thing you wanna pay attention to is that the different Wi-Fi that's provided in public spaces is not secure. It's open, anybody can access and see what's going on there. So you wanna make sure if you're using an open network like that, that you do not share any personal information, bank account information or any of that sort of thing that you don't want anybody to see. It's important to make sure you're on a secure network for any kind of transactions that you're gonna be doing of a personal nature. And furthermore, to make it even more secure, it would be a great idea to have a virtual private network, a VPN. With a VPN, you're able to put that extra layer of security on there and make sure that nobody's gonna see the things that you're doing on the internet of a sensitive nature. Another nice thing with a VPN is that you can set it to whatever country that you want to set it to. So if you're in another country, you can change it to be in the country that you're from so that you can watch TV shows from your home country. Or you can also change it to some other country where they might have Netflix shows that you really like to that you really like to watch. So I know some people, they really like British Netflix, so they'll change their VPN to show that it's in the UK. So then Netflix thinks that this computer who's accessing us is based in the UK. And so they'll provide to you the UK based Netflix series and shows and things like that. So you can actually watch those things without actually being in the UK or whatever country it is that you like their shows. So that's another way that you can use your VPN to your advantage to access different types of shows that you wouldn't normally be able to see in your own country. For me, I use NordVPN for my VPN. And I've been using it for the last several years, haven't had any issues with them. It's worked out really well. I have it for my phone and also for my laptop. So it's a great service to have to add that extra layer of security onto your, your computer or your device, whatever it is that you're using to access the internet. So if you're interested in NordVPN, I'll leave a link down below in the description. And also I'll leave links there for Google Fi and Aerolo as well. Do you have any other ideas for handling your phone service and data service when you're traveling? If you do, please share those down in the comments. In the next video in this series, we'll be talking about managing your finances while you're traveling. So stay tuned for that one. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, let's get out there and travel.